Hey, welcome back everybody. None of us want to cause harm to ourselves or our tools while woodworking with pallets. So today I'm going to share five safety tips while woodworking with pallet wood. My first tip is to get yourself some good PPE. You're going to need yourself some good eye protection. I have a face shield and also a pair of nice uh, uh, eyeglasses here that I use. Get yourself some good hearing protection because you're going to make a lot of noise. I like these because I can listen to the radio. You're also going to need some form of face mask or a respirator. I used these for a good long time and then I recently invested in one of these RZ masks. I haven't had it very long so I'm not going to tell you that I like it or not yet. I want to use it a little bit longer then I'll probably do a review on it. Another suggestion that I would say is to take those pallets outside and break them down. That way you're not bringing any extra dust into your shop than necessary. Last but not least in this category is get yourself some good gloves. Those dried out pallets from the sun really splinter badly and will really tear up your hands. The second tip I have for you is really inspect those pallets before you take them home. Oftentimes you can see spills on those pallets, meaning you can see chemical stains or you can see where something is spilled on that pallet. Those are ones I'm going to avoid. A little bit of extra insurance is to take those pallets when you get home and just go ahead and spray them down. That way if there's any chemical residues left on the pallets, hopefully we can remove that. If you have a good pressure washer, I bet that would work a lot better than just the hose. Personally, if I see a pallet that looks like it has a really nasty stain on it, I don't have anything to do with it. I'm leaving it where it is. The third tip I have for you is really consider where you're getting your pallet. Personally, I'm not going to get the pallet from a chemical supplier or a pool company or some other location where I think there's potential for chemicals to be transporting on those pallets. I think a little common sense can go a long way when considering where you're getting your pallets, where you're bringing them to your shop from. I can't remember the exact article, but I'll try to find it and link it in the description. But there was a writer discussing how new motorcycles are transported on new pallets. The writer mentioned that people buying a new motorcycle did not want to buy a motorcycle that was transported on an old pallet. This really illustrates the point that you can find pallets depending on where you're looking and oftentimes they're brand new and have never been used except for that one transport. If you can find new pallets, that's ideal. The fourth tip I have is be sure you have a good metal detector. I'm using the Wizard 5 metal detector I bought on Amazon. I'll definitely put a, a link to, to this tool in the description. It's been an awesome tool. These pallets are riddled with nails and I've even noticed small fragments of metal that I didn't even know was there that I found with the metal detector. One of our viewers even mentioned that he drills out where the nail holes were because oftentimes those small little metal wires that attach the nails together inside the nail gun actually get embedded in the wood and you can't see it and it can still damage your planer. On multiple occasions during this uh, pallet wood project I'm working on, I've, I've noticed that there was metal in the wood with my metal detector, but I could not see any metal with my naked eye. The fifth tip I have is probably the most complicated, well maybe not, but you need to learn a little bit of nomenclature around pallets. Pallets are labeled in a specific manner so you can know a little bit about the history of that pallet. Oftentimes, by looking at the pallet nomenclature, you can see the country in which it originated from, and you can also see any treatment that pallet has had prior to arriving at its destination. Pallets are historically treated in different ways to prevent bugs and critters and things from being transported in those pallets from say country to country or state to state. The last thing you want to do is be planing a pallet that's been treated with say methyl bromide which is a toxic chemical. Some of the common nomenclature you'll see is HT, capital HT, and that stands for heat treated. Another common thing you'll see is MB and that stands for methylene bromide. Actually, it's probably not that common anymore. I don't think that the United States uh, or Canada is actually treating pallets with methylene bromide anymore as it's been known to be a neurotoxin and also a carcinogen. Those are just fancy words meaning nerve damage or cancer causing agent. Another common abbreviation you may see is DB and that means debart. And also there is KD which stands for kiln dried. I'm going to put a link in the description to a really great article that describes all of this nomenclature. 
This article is not long, it's easy to read, and I think it will really educate you on some of the terminology or nomenclature that you should know before working with pallets. It would be impossible for me to make a completely inclusive list of safety precautions when working with pallets. I think these five tips are helpful for you and you should uh, use these tips at your own discretion. I think most of these tips actually could apply to reclaimed lumber as well from other sources with the exception of the nomenclature. But you really got to make the decisions for yourself. You need to make sure you're safe and your shop is safe and the environment is safe when working with reclaimed material. I hope these tips have helped you and maybe if nothing else will sort of increase your interest in learning about some of these uh, safety tips regarding pallet wood. If you have some other tips that you would like to share with the uh, viewers regarding safety with pallets or articles that you think we should read, please post those in the uh, comment section so we can all benefit from that. As always, I really appreciate you watching. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you'll be alerted when I make a new video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.